It has been described as the most important bilateral relationship of the 21st century. China is the most populous nation on earth. The United States has the world's largest economy. Our futures are intertwined, for good or ill. So, what's being done to guide this all-important relationship towards the good? I would say the National Committee is an indispensable part of any long-range approach to China. Over the last 45 years, the National Committee on United States-China Relations has forged a stunning array of programs resulting in an infrastructure of understanding between two countries long divided by a very different history, language, culture, and politics. What Americans find so difficult to comprehend is the extraordinary change that has occurred in China. When I first came here, there were places that didn't have electricity, that didn't have running water. In the morning, you would get up and the only thing that you would hear would be the tinkling of bells as the bicycles maneuvered down the streets of Beijing. There were virtually no cars. The change that has occurred in China is almost unfathomable. We've seen the Chinese eat better, get better health care, live in better houses, have better transportation, have better the education. Said, yes, I would like you to be a teacher in China. And <laughs> These extraordinary changes in China have only been possible because the United States and China have maintained constructive relations. Founded by a small group of academic, religious, and business leaders to educate the American public on China, it emerged as a critical hinge in the door that President Richard Nixon and Secretary of State Henry Kissinger pushed open in 1972. Well, when I first opened up to China, we had no precise idea of what outside groups could do. But in the consolidation of the relationship and then maintaining it over a period of 40 years, groups like the National Committee are, I would say, essential. The early founders of the National Committee back in the mid-60s were saying to themselves, here's China, this enormous country that anchors Asia. We, have, we don't understand it. We don't know what's going on. We have no dialogue. Uh, let's start to think about it. And at the time, it was a Cold War. And it was difficult for there to be a dialogue about China. I think when I was in Shanghai, actually, uh, in my middle school, high school, the whole country, that was a close China and regarded as, especially by people in the U.S., red China, communist China, and no way to communicate, especially among people. When I think about the National Committee started in 1966, we hadn't opened up uh, diplomatic relations with China. We were still in the midst of the Cold War. Then the phone rang. We had gotten a phone call from a friend and colleague uh, at Newsweek. And she said, I just learned on the ticker that the US ping pong team has been invited to Beijing. Well, this was astonishing. The caller said, do you think the National Committee could help? And two weeks later, the US ping pong team was home and history had been made. As the new relationship was ushered in by Richard Nixon and Mao Zedong, the National Committee stepped up and began the long process of transforming itself from an educational organization into a proactive nonprofit. Policymakers are concerned with immediate issues, uh, but there has to be a constituency in the society that understands the importance of a long range relationship with a country of the magnitude of China and of the history uh, of China. My own personal belief is that if you can get two people into a room and they can shed all of the garbage that they've and the baggage that they're bringing with them and just sit down and talk as two human beings, that we can work out most of the problems in the world. Now, maybe that's very Pollyannish and naive of me, but that's basically what I believe. If you look at energy security, sufficiency of food, climate change, environmental protection, sustainability of development. 
almost on every issue, America and China shares the same concern. And so what the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations does is look across a broad spectrum of activity and see how can we help, whether it's in education, whether it's in government, whether it's with respect to students or teachers or mayors. If we can make them better informed, then America is brighter, safer, and more prosperous.